So talk a little bit about how to get it set up with membership and repository, et cetera. I'm going to talk a little bit now about actually using the thing. Um, settings are going to still tie into it a little bit. On the top of the window, you'll notice there's a whole lot of green buttons here. It's overview, activity, issues, new issue, NAT, calendar, news, documents, wiki, files, repository. Most of these buttons represent uh, what's called a module in Redmine, basically a piece of functionality you can choose to enable or disable. Um, so real quick, if you go to settings, um, under modules here, it's the second tab. Currently in this project, all of the available mod modules are enabled. I'm actually going to start by pretty much disabling all of them, uh, just to simplify the bar a little bit and then going through them one by one. So I'm going to start by disabling everything except issue tracking. If I click Save, you'll notice that along the top, I've lost a whole lot of my, uh, my buttons there. I still have Overview. That's a built-in, which kind of shows you the state of your project. I still have Activity. Um, this won't make a whole lot of sense until later, but it shows what's been happening on your project recently. Um, and I have Issues, which is the one module I chose to leave enabled. And then Settings on the far right up, up by itself, that's just there. Uh, it's also a built-in. So what are Issues in Redmine? Uh, again, Redmine is fundamentally a project tracking tool. Um, and one of the most basic ways you can keep track of the state of a project is what issues you have open. Issues could be bugs, they could be features, they could be insert descriptive term here. But uh, in pro at projects.kx.pdx.edu, we are limited to basically the two, to two uh, issue types, which are bugs and features. This is, again, aimed primarily at developers of software. Um, so right now, as a new project, there are, is no data to display, as is said here. The first thing, I'm going to go ahead and create an issue. I'm going to click the New Issue button. Um, it's going to show up. I'm going to say, I want to, I'm going to make a feature bug. Tracker, by the way, is what kind of issue or whatever you're creating. Subject, um, I'm going to say Add Wiki Module. Okay. Parent task, if you want to, um, issues can have parent issues. Uh, it just helps organizing it. I'm not going to leave that alone for now. Description. Add a wiki module to the demo project. Status new, prior priority. All of these are just organizational tools to help you get that, keep track of what's going on with an issue. Assignee. If you want to, you can choose to assign this to a specific member of your team. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assign this to demo. Start date, due date. Uh, if you actually know when this needs to get done by, you can assign you know, it needs to be done by today, I'm going to say right now. And I'm going to estimate it's going to take me 0.01 hours. And go ahead and hit Create. Okay. So, at this point, I have created an issue. And if I click on the Issues tab again, I'll get a listing. Uh, in this case, I've got one issue. There's a number associated with it. The number has absolutely nothing to do with your project. It's just, it's just a unique identifier. Um, if you go ahead and click on the number, uh, it'll actually show you the details of your project. If I want, I can click Update. Um, I can say I'm going to start starting to add modules here. I'm going to change the percent from 0 to 20 percent. Hit Submit. And that update will show up uh, right below the issue description under the History tab. It'll tell me when it was updated, anything I added, any changes I made to the attributes of the issue. Okay. So I'm just going to mention a little bit. there. You can't see it in this project very well because there's only one issue, but if you get to the point where you have like tens or hundreds or even more issues, um, you're going to want to have some way of managing and tracking and looking through these. So I'm going to jump to a project for a second that has just a few more issues. I go back to projects here and select a uh, project called projects that I'm going to look at. If you click on issues here, you'll notice it has a few more. This right here, where it says filters here and options here, this stuff is kind of important. Um, right now, I'm filtering for all open issues. Just for fun, I'm going to change that to all and hit the apply button. So I get a few more issues um, show, showed up. Also, uh, if I wanted to actually, if I wanted to filter a little bit more, I'm going to say what if status is, uh, say status is new. Hit apply there. So now I have a few more issues, or a few, fewer issues. What if I want to say Add a filter. I want to say I want to only show trackers. I, want, I only want to see the bugs. Hit the apply button. And so you can kind of use this to drill down and see exactly what you're looking for. Um, if you want, you know, more specific information, you could say 
subject. I want subject contains uh, guap, if I happen to know what uh, ticket I was searching for. There we go. Another thing, options. So those are the filters. You can use that to drill down. What information is actually displayed is determined in the options menu here. You'll notice that right now the defaults are it shows the tracker, the status, the priority, the subject, the assignee, and when it was last updated. There's a whole bunch more information you can add in here though. Um, I'm going to say, so I'm going to add category. I'm going to take out assignee. Maybe I don't care about who's working on it right now. And priority. I'm going to say uh, percent done just for fun. And you, and you can reorganize these. You know, which column comes first, etc. Go ahead and hit apply. You'll notice that I have a considerably different looking uh, table here. So that kind of tells you what tools you have available to actually, oh, you have group, group by too if you want to do that. If I want to say group by, say tracker, apply. Here are all my bugs grouped first. Here are all my uh, features. There's my support issues, that kind of thing. So one thing I forgot to mention a half second ago that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and clear this and try and get back to the default. Is you'll notice there's a select checkbox um, to the left of all these issues. And you can kind of select it and it'll highlight stuff and show and et cetera. Um, you can perform mass actions on items. Like I'm going to select all my bugs here. The trick to know how to do this is once you have an item selected, uh, what you want to do is go ahead and right click it. Um, and what that'll do is it'll pull up a little context menu. And from there, you can kind of choose uh, all your, you know, your mass update actions and that kind of fun stuff. Like I'm going to assign all of these to um, this Seebeck fellow. All right, so now all of the bugs have been assigned to Seebeck, and that's the mass mass action. So once you drill down, you can select all using the checkboxes all the issues you want to update. Then the trick: right click on one of the highlighted issues, um, and that'll pull up your context menu. All right.